I'm here to tell you that I think most of you will fail to extend your health spans. And that's because the aging models you're using to guide health span intervention choices do not account for one of the biggest root cause drivers of human aging, the viral, bacterial, parasite, and other pathogens that can infect and persist in your tissues across the course of your life. All of us, often starting in the womb, acquired from our mothers, and then via close contact, ingested foods and other exposures, acquire these infectious organisms into our bodies across time. Key is that once these infections are in us, many of them remain persisting in our tissues or our nerves for life. In fact, they gradually embed themselves into the tissues of our brains, our nervous systems, and in some cases, even the tissues of our reproductive systems. For example, some of you out of there might have gotten food poisoning once, and you assume that the bacteria that caused it is out of your body. Wrong. A small amount of the organism might still be persisting in your gut, even if it's no longer driving overt symptoms. Or you might have gotten a spider bite or a mosquito bite and acquired a virus or a parasite into your body that is still hiding somewhere in your nerves. And this happens more than you'd think. Even sometimes when you get a cold or the flu, the infection that caused it can remain in your tissue where it might be able to drive more problems at a later date. Here are some examples of the persistent pathogens that we have in us. Right at this moment, at least 95% of you out there have one or more strains of herpes virus in your body. These are viruses like the Epstein-Barr virus, human herpes virus 6, and cytomegalovirus. And once acquired, they will persist in the cells of your tissues and your nerves for life. Or, as another example, about 11% of people here in the US and up to 87% of people in some global regions harbor the chronic parasite toxoplasma, which can chronically infect and persist in their brains. And those are just two of dozens, if not hundreds, of examples. This figure shows numerous virus families that have been shown capable of persisting for long periods of time in areas like our nervous systems, our digestive tracts, and other body sites. And I know you can't probably read all the virus family names, and honestly, that's part of the point. I can't fit them all. Research we're working on has even found the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the COVID virus, in tissue from people both with and without chronic symptoms months or years after initial infection. So this image, the pink dots are persistent SARS-CoV-2 virus in gut tissue collected from a person with long COVID almost two years after they first got sick. And here's the thing. These chronic pathogens are the closest thing there are to hackers of the human body. As they live in us, they can create proteins and products that actively distort the signaling of our own human genes. In fact, pathogens can drive every feature of human aging. And to emphasize that point, we created this figure. It takes the hallmarks of aging and provides examples of how pathogens and their products can drive each hallmark, including mitochondrial dysfunction, microbiome dysbiosis, T cell exhaustion, epigenetic alterations, inflammation, cellular senescence, telomere attrition, and cognitive decline like dementia. Let me give you a few specific examples. Pathogens hijack host cell metabolism, or the ability of our cells to correctly produce energy. And by doing that, they can directly drive the mitochondrial dysfunction that accompanies aging. And that's because once in us, they act purely for their own benefit, draining our function to bolster their own. In fact, all viruses are obligate intracellular parasites. And what that means is they're not even alive. 
so they can't create their own energy or replicate and create a new copy of themselves without stealing from the cells that they infect. And to do that, they pull the raw materials they need to function directly out of our own mitochondria, which inevitably dysregulates and reprograms the metabolism of the infected human cell. Here's another example of how pathogens can impact the hallmarks of aging. In this case, telomere length. Telomeres are protective caps at the end of our chromosomes that can detrimentally shorten with aging. Well, this study found that human herpes virus 6 can directly integrate into the telomeres of the cells that infects, and that telomeres carrying an integrated copy of the virus were shorter and more unstable, which is not a great situation to have going on in your body if you want to live longer. Here's another example. Viruses have evolved to hack the signaling of our receptors and pathways that control the expression of our human genes. For example, this analysis found that dozens of proteins created by viruses can directly interact with and distort the signaling of human aging pathways, including pathways that regulate cellular senescence or the ability of cells to correctly repair themselves and divide. In fact, the dysregulating impact of the viral proteins on longevity-associated signaling was so profound that the team concluded that we need an entire reconceptualization of the locus of aging, no longer exclusively focused on our own genetic material, but expanded to a larger set of genetic entities like viruses that can interact with our species' genetics. And I completely agree. So what do we do about this pathogen-driven age distortion? Well, first we need to take it seriously. Some of you right now are working on approaches to extend health span like cellular reprogramming or CRISPR gene editing. But I just don't know how well those interventions are truly going to work if you have a persistent virus or parasite slowly crawling up your nerves and into your brain over time, distorting the system. It's like trying to put out a forest fire when someone is still putting fuel on the flames. We don't need to begin editing our human genes until we first take logical steps to curb the activity of the pathogens that can hack them in the first place. Because if we choose to care, there are dozens of existing antiviral and antiparasite medications and compounds that we can integrate into health span extending protocols and many new antipathogen compounds or immune activating therapies we can work to create. Consider this as just one example of what might happen if we integrated such therapies into health span extending protocols. This team, by doing a large population level data analysis, found that people who have herpes simplex virus, in this study, people who had herpes simplex virus, and then regularly took affordable, generic, widely available anti-herpes virus medications, had a 10 times lower risk of developing dementia later in life. Another consideration is that right now, if you walk into a doctor's office, the testing they can do to identify persistent pathogens in your body are often inaccurate and out of date. So we don't even have good tests to know what chronic infections are in us. But we can change that. There are teams across the world with new diagnostic platforms that can be iterated into the chronic infection space. For example, there are now some groups that can take your blood and identify small vesicles in the blood carrying tiny amounts of a pathogen or its proteins that are totally missed by current standard testing. We must invest in these new diagnostic test platforms so that they can be added into biological age tracking. So that's it. Let's do it. Let's add the activity of persistent pathogens into our aging models. Because if we can better diagnose, track, and curb the activity of the pathogen hackers in our bodies, 
then we will actually succeed at extending health span. Thank you.